What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 275 of the Aussie Gamers Experience podcast. In the show this week, Pax is, Pax is here. Destiny 2, Battlefield 5, Jerk Goosing, Erica, The Division 2 Shunning, Apple Arcade, Goodbye Sean, and Thanks for All the Memories, COD Mobile, and much, much more. Editing Lucas, play the track, mates. This is the Aussie Gamers Experience Podcast, the show with barking dogs in the background, sneezing, <laughs> coughing, and all of those nice little things that remind you that this is not a paid production. Oh, <laughs> and in between all of that, there's some video game stuff too. Enjoy the show. Thank you for tuning into the show this week. Today is Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2019. I'm your host, Snoobs, and joining me for hosting duties this week is the one and only Lucas. How are you, mate? G'day. I'm very good. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. That's good. Everything's kind of been thrown in disarray this week. Oh, After tell me about weekend. it. Weekend, yeah, long weekend. <laughs> I was sitting there. It was Monday afternoon. I was buggered, uh, you know, rooted from work, and I was sitting on the lounge. And I, I don't know. I think I jumped on Discord and I was looking at it. And I'm like, hang on a second, it's Monday. I've completely yeah. forgotten about the podcast. Yeah, here's here's me asking people. Oh, you know who's online tonight? What are we going to play? Uh, Pat, by the way, it's um, it's podcast day. Oh shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was exhausted and, no, and in no shape to do a podcast, so yeah, we sort of delayed it to today being Tuesday, but uh, you know, we're here, we're doing the show, we're, we're a little bit lonely this week, but understandable considering the uh, the mix-up with all the times and stuff. Yeah, the uh, the mix-up, the, uh, the school holidays, the public holiday, uh, Sydney-wide, I tell you what, mate, I've, I've never actually enjoyed driving around Sydney as much as I have today, because there is no one in it. Oh really? Yeah, very very quiet. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the mm-hmm. on the downside, a couple of the um, customers that I said, "Oh, by the way, I'm dropping this off to you next week," weren't there, uh-huh. so I'm not going to see them again until next week. Mm, okay, I'm to PAX. But yes. oh, well, you get that. Bloody daylight savings as well has thrown spanners in the works. This this is so stupid. I, I tweeted out about it the other day about how it's so ridiculous and un- unnecessary like it's an unnecessary confusion to your mm. your day-to-day life like i understand the concept of you know putting it an hour forward so that way you know we get up and start the day and we have the daylight there Re- do we do yeah. we need that it's one hour like the the mess that it creates is it necessary like the amount of people there obviously these days is l- less of an excuse because most of our smartphones adjust you know, for daylight savings automatically. But it, mm-hmm. th- there's, there used to be days where on on that day, if you worked, so many people would come in an hour late because of the screw up and the forgetting of the time. But it just, it just, just like if you're a, a shift worker and you work night shifts, it's an absolute nightmare because there are some people that need to work beyond the finished time because they have to do their allotted hours. So even though you're supposed to finish at 3 a.m., you actually have to stick around till four to to finish your hours because the the time goes forward. And then when the time goes back, you have to stick around for the extra hour if you're in a in a job where you have to wait for relief to turn up because they're rocking up at the new time. And if you leave, then there's an hour gap where there's no one there. It's a mess. <laughs> it's an absolute mess. Daylight savings can get stuffed for all I say. But yeah. anyway, that's that's why I liked you know the older cars because it was only right for six months of the year. The rest of the time it was like meh. I'm just running on that time. If you- <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, well, that's another working. thing. That's another thing. I had to Google how to change the clock on my car. <laughs> and there are two separate clocks. There's a clock on my, like, stereo thing, which is separate to mm-hmm. the clock that's on the, the, the dash in front of me. And I thought that changing the one clock would change the other one. No, no, they're two separate ones. Oh, I had to Google oh, it. I didn't I, really- I've, yeah. I've got one better for you. When I've got my phone plugged in, to the um, uh, the Android CarPlay, yeah, the f- the time's fine. It's it's right. As soon as I unplug my phone, the time's wrong again. <laughs> so it takes the time from your phone, but when it's plugged in, it doesn't save it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh. intelligence plus right there. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, yeah. Daylight really? savings sucks. But anyway, 
Anyway, Pickles of Brian has joined us over in the Discord, so welcome. Good day, buddy. Thank you for dropping in. Uh, let's jump into some This Week in Gaming. Sure. What, what, what are you going to tell us, What uh, and how far back are we going? We're only going as far back as 2007 this week. Ooh. Is it a James Bond game? No, but that kind of works in pretty well, doesn't it? Anyway, it's Portal. The original oh, Portal was released oh, on Steam. Worldwide. One of the best games ever made and only shadowed yes. by its success, uh, successor. Yeah, well, anyway, the, 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 sequ- yeah, the sequel. Yeah. Oh, brilliant games. Absolutely top games. Uh, of course, published and developed by Valve, uh, Valve Corporation, I think they classify themselves as. Um, released worldwide on Steam. Uh, a whole heap of game awards, as you could expect. Yeah. So it was the 2007 Game of the Year. It won 2007's Best Puzzle Game of the Year, 2007 Best Character of the Year for which character did you think? Oh, no. Oh, yeah, Wheatley was in the second one. So GLaDOS, yeah. Wheatley was in the second one, yeah. So it was GLaDOS. And it got uh, Best Sidekick of the Year for the Weighted Companion Cube. Oh, (laughs) yes. Actually, that's funny you mention that because I'm going away for the next four days. I'm commissioning my mm-hmm. 3D printer to do a 48-hour print. Oh, so, God. So it's going to be done by the time I get back. And I kid you not, it's a weighted companion cube is what I've got set up. <laughs> that is that is a massive coincidence because we haven't chatted. I had no oh, idea that God. you were going to talk no. about Portal. No. But I have a companion cube ready to go and I'm doing it 150 by 150 by 150, which is the maximum build that my printer can do. So I'm doing a companion cube. And it's going to take 48 oh, hours. The stars have aligned on that one, haven't they? <laughs> I know. How about that? That's that's wow. bizarre. But anyway, very, very um, coincidental. Mm. So uh, I actually never played Portal until it was on the Orange Box on the PS3. Yeah, well, I was relatively late to Portal as well. I, I picked up Portal when it was only... <sighs> like a, a, probably a couple of dollars on Steam. I, I had no idea what mm-hmm. it was. And when I played it, actually, no, I didn't buy it. That's right. I had downloaded an illegal copy of it and I oh, played okay. it, finished it, and then bought it because uh, I thought a game that good deserves to be paid for. And I, I went I went and bought it. And I, I didn't actually ever play the, um, uh, the, the one I purchased. I purchased it just for the sake of saying, you know, that, that you know, yeah, you shouldn't pirate games, and I don't even know why I did. Maybe somebody gave it to me and said, "Here, play this." And uh, I just thought, you know what, I've got to buy that because it was so good. I need to pay for that. Mm-hmm. That's that 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 is the thanks that I'm going to give to them. And then, yeah, I went because Portal Two was out at that stage. I just went straight and bought the second one and played that one as well. Oh my god! Nice. And they are they are the best puzzle games that I have. ever ever played and had I played them the year that they were released would have been my game of the year as well Mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant games yes so they're they're still floating around steam of course and we all know about uh portal 3 it's never coming it's it's not gonna come no just just accept it it's not happening and it's one of those things you know what i'm quite happy if it doesn't come because the first two were so fantastically perfect (laughs) Mm. Uh, i'm happy with that yeah that's yeah that's right Okay, so that's uh, that's this week in gaming. So uh, let's just dump into the uh, the meat and bones of the show, shall we, mate? Let's do it. When we do that, I, I do have an apology to make. Oh, what are you apologising so, for? Well, I'm going to apologise to yourself, mate. Oh, to me? So, what have you done? Yes, to you. Uh, for for many many times, and you and I had the conversation in person on the show in chat. You know, many different ways that I don't see frame rates. Oh. That's the difference. <laughs> yes, okay. I know I know what you're right? talking about. Yeah. You know where I'm going with this one now. So I, I've said it and I will put it out there. I've said it many times that I don't see frame rates. I don't understand the difference between 30 and 60. Well, I do now. <laughs> Let's just say. Uh, so last week I spoke about Destiny 2 going free to play on Steam. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still haven't checked if it's free on everything else, but we'll get there. Uh, my PC is no world beater, but it can run it at with, I think it's with roughly medium settings and I can run it at 60 frames, 1080 without fail, without a skip, Mm. you know, and it, and it's just, it is gorgeous. Yeah. The, the big, the big battles where you've got lots of crap flying around it, it's just stunning. There's, you know, I, I was just in awe the amount of things that I did 
and I was throwing specials and no, for no reason whatsoever other than to look at how pretty it was. Just to watch it the frame rate. <laughs> See, I mean, look. Absolutely stunning. Uh, <clears throat> this is why I'm an advocate for many, many years now that frame rate should take precedence over mm-hmm. resolution. Resolution is nice. Yep. I like playing my games at 4K on my PC, but not if I can't run it at 4K 60. If I can't run 4K yep. 60, you're going down to 1080. Because yeah, because you know, sixty is the, more important. Yeah, in the in the settings, there's a bit at the top which tells you um, how much gig of your graphics card is being used up. Oh yeah, now, I believe yeah. my graphics card is a four gig graphics card. Mm-hmm. So when I was running at full high settings and sixty frames, it was using three point something gig. Uh, so I dropped it back and I said, okay, I'll just run it at thirty, and thought, okay, that'll be fine. You know, it runs at thirty on the PlayStation and the Xbox. I'll be fine with that. I turned it on started playing through it and yes there were certain things that looked very crisp very clean in regards to like shadowing extra clouds and stuff in the sky you know little bits like that but i could not play it because of the frame jumpiness it was just completely different and because i was playing so much at the 60 frames because i was just so in awe of it and then going back to the 30 i've just gone nah and i just went back to recommended settings put it on 60 and left it Yes, my man he gets it. He gets it now. Yeah, so I I do get it. I do understand it, and uh, it's it's absolutely stunning. I, I did not realize. I, I'd I'd sort of forgotten how good that game looks. Yeah, you know, uh, it's. I haven't bought the new DLC yet. I was able to port my entire uh, my characters, my play my playthrough, all my gear and everything from my PS4 version over to Steam so I can play it on Steam and on the PlayStation. But does that mean that you can't play it on your PlayStation now? No, no, no. I can play it on the PlayStation as well. Oh, so they sync up? Yeah, it's got cross-save. Oh, oh, that's good. So, yeah. So you can pick either your old Battle.net login. Oh, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Or whatever they, yeah, whatever they were using before. So you can use C to sync that, your Xbox or your PlayStation. You can only pick one, obviously. Yeah. Um... And then, yeah, go from there. So all my characters were there. All my gear had been bumped up to level, light level 750. I think when I left it, the last time I played it, it was 600 or something. Mm. Uh, So everything's been bumped up. Yeah, it's all sort of here. This is this is where you need to be to start Shadow Keep. Let's go. I haven't bought Shadow Keep. I'm not 100 percent sure whether I want to get back into the grind of it. How much is it? Uh, Or I haven't looked. It's probably 50 was bucks I, or something. Yeah, I think I paid $60 for the last one and it, it didn't wow me. So I'm not sure whether I whether I want to spend any more money. You know, I've already put, you know, $180 into it. But yeah, I mean, it's the kind of game where <clears throat> unless you're playing it free to play, to play the, like just the, you've never played it before, just to play the original campaign. If you're buying it to play it beyond the campaign, you pretty much have to buy the DLC. Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. Yeah. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. I've still got it there. I've um, I've jumped in a couple of times this week and played it, uh, not doing anything other than just the daily runarounds and whatnot and using it to get a bit better with the whole keyboard and mouse, uh, which I completely and utterly suck at. I can't tell you why. <laughs> it's just I can't get it right for certain things, but... Yeah, well, you just that's what try we're playing with a controller upside down. Try and get used to that. It's just completely different yeah. to any sort of controller. Your mm. fingers don't know where yeah. the keys are. No. It's, yeah, but I used to do it. I used to do it religiously. I used to do it yeah, so much. And but the games you, and- yeah, the games you used to play, which I used to play as well, had space bar to jump, control to shoot, yeah. and shift to strafe, and that was it. Now there's grenades. Yeah. There's weapon choices. There's crouching. There's proning. There's you know mm. there's a, a thousand different keys. Well, even though there's only a hundred and one keys, there's so many different combinations <laughs> and different keys oh, that he's used. Uh, and back in the day, I used to use up, down, left, right to move. Now it's WSAD, which makes it harder for a lefty. But this, it's completely changed. Yeah, when we were younger and used keyboard and mouse, there was shoot and jump. That was basically it. <laughs> so that, I'm going to go and play some Quake. Yeah, we could probably play that. <laughs> yeah, I think we'd do all right with that one. Yeah. <laughs> all right, mate. Um, let me know about Erica. You started right. playing through last night. Yes. Now, you, you mentioned Erica a few weeks ago, and I, I finally had a mm-hmm. chance to play it. Now, the first thing I want to ask you is, did you get the good ending or the bad ending? I think there's six different endings. Okay. Well, did you get a good ending or a bad ending? 
uh, I got what what I would perceive as pretty bad. Pretty bad. Okay. Well, I got what I perceive as a bad ending, but the problem is. I also got the bad beginning and middle part because the whole fucking game is bad. What what the hell were you talking about when you raved on about what? it and had to I go back it. and play it? I thought it was terrible. Why? Because it, 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 the, the acting was rubbish. The story was mm-hmm. slow and boring. Uh, the, the acti- like the actions that it makes you do, because we playing, I'm playing this game with a smartphone. I use the app, and it was yep. so tedious, the things that it got you to do. It reminded me of Beyond Two Souls. Actually, my wife made a comment. Rachel made a comment about it being like Beyond Two Souls as well, having to do such mundane tasks. Like, there was a, there was a, a part where... Uh, Erica, the character was sitting there on her own and she was just flicking a Zippo lighter, just flicking the lid open and closed, open and closed. I said, I don't want to have to do that. Really? <laughs> it was too, uh, half the time I made my own fun where she was, op- there was a box. There's a box that gets delivered to your house and you have to open it and you slide your finger on the screen to open it. But I was like, Oh, and then I'd shut it again. Oh, I'm going to open it. What's inside? I'd shut it again. And I'd go, oh, come on. This time I'm going to, this time, this, no, I'm going to close it. And I was just like, oh, eh, this really? is, okay. this, this is boring. Oh. <laughs> and then there was a bit in the game where I made a decision and I went, oh, I wonder if that was the right. Oh, that's the credits. Clearly okay. that, clearly that was the wrong decision. Uh, so look, I, I didn't like it at all. No, it was. I remember. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I remember you saying something about the the, the person that they chose to play Erica and how you really liked their choice. Mm-hmm. That girl looks like she is constantly reliving a memory of uh, eating a sour lemon. <laughs> If she cracked a smile oh. in that game at any point, I missed it. She wasn't she wasn't meant to crack a smile. She's someone that has, you know, severe mental trauma. Yeah, but she's she, but it no. was just oh, just that character, she just seemed like it was poorly acted, miserable. It just uh, just I don't know, it's just almost like they just kept telling her just just stop being normal and just be a lemon-lipped bitch the entire time. I don't know about lemon lips. Uh, lemon lipped. I would say miserable. Yes, and you know when you the the things that I got from it was that you know she's she's witnessed the murder of a father. Her mother's gone missing, presumed dead. She's had all this bullshit go on with her life. She's just you know now been thrust back into something after a horrific moment. Hence opening that box, and it just kind of all fit in really well. Like she was just this this young woman that didn't know what she was doing, didn't know where she was, was quite sad, depressed, vulnerable, and trying to work out what was the right thing to do. And you, that's it, sort of how I looked at it. But even her, like what she was like before any of this stuff kicked off, I'm just like, she's just, just, just like a miserable existence, this thing. Like <laughs> if the, there's a part where this girl is uh, that lives across the hall from her is oh, it looks like she's pissed or something fumbling with the keys trying to get in and Erica op- he gives her the choice open the door and help or you know lock the door I, I unlocked it and opened the door and offered her help but it was it was just like this Erica is just shit scared of her own shadow she just open the door and she's like mm-hmm. do, you, do, do you need some help it's like fuck if you're gonna offer help like what she wouldn't be able to help a, an ant across the road she'd be too scared Oh, it just, exactly. Oh, it, it just didn't. It was poorly acted. It was very B grade. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I can't say anything good about it. I didn't enjoy any of it. I just, I kept thinking, oh, no, Snook said it was good. Maybe it gets good. There's a, there's going to be something that's going to, no, nothing. It never came. It never came. <laughs> and it just, there were bits in the game that just felt like they were made by a completely different team because it just didn't feel like it fit. I just... What sort of bits were those? Like, you know, you get taken to what is uh, like a a mental hospital. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure if you get taken there because they sneakily think that you're nuts or if they really are just protecting you because that's where they're doing their investigation. So they're like, come with us and you can stay there. Seems like a stupid idea in the first place. If you want to protect someone, come with me. Come with me to work. Yeah, I'm going to where we're investigating a crime. You can stay there too. That sounds 
stupid and unrealistic. And then there was a part where you get into a car and go and see another guy who slips you a note saying we need to talk. And I'm just like, why are we here? I don't, I don't, I don't understand what, what is going on. Uh, the, <laughs> Uh, just, I was extremely tired, which probably didn't assist, but I'm sure I'm lucid enough to, to feel that it, there was a lot of things in that game that didn't make sense. It was almost like we need to introduce this next thing that happens and we, we can't really do it without Erica being there because that's who you're playing as and it's a video game. It's not a movie. We can't just cut to another character. So they've just gone, yeah, bring Erica along. Come on, jump in the car. We'll go for a bit of a field trip. Why not? Nothing else makes sense. So just do it. <laughs> And and then it kind of has like a little bit of a, a, a shining ending to it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Look, I, yeah, 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 yeah. There are I could, a few. I, I can see your your analogy there. Yeah, yeah. Look, there are a few decisions that I would like to make differently, but I'm not going to play it again. So I'll never, I'll <laughs> never make those different decisions. <laughs> but uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. No, huh? no. Well, that's um. That's two very contrasting opinions. Oh, and this is always a good thing to have. The friggin' controller using the iPhone, it, it would disconnect sporadically. Yeah. Which, uh, did that happen to that's you? That's why I just stuck with the con- No, no, no. I just used the controller. Uh, I didn't the use the, the iPhone or the phone. Um, yeah. I've, I've tried a few, I've played a few of those because um, they're those party games. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, it's technically it, one of them, isn't it? It's, it's, it, well, it, it was originally toted as a PlayLink title, but they have completely That's stripped Play the PlayLink uh, name from anything to do with the game. You can't, if you go to the, the listing, it doesn't mention PlayLink. Uh, the app doesn't mention PlayLink, even though it is a PlayLink game and it was originally advertised as a PlayLink game. I think they removed it because of the sort of stigma behind PlayLink, which is like silly family fun games where this game yeah, yeah. isn't. It's actually quite gruesome uh, in a 1980s kind of way. Hmm. But, but yeah, I, I I haven't had problems with connectivity in, in previous games. I don't know if it was, I don't know where that issue come from, whether it was my phone, whether it was my Wi-Fi connection or whether it was the console or whether it was the, the game. I don't know, but I had issues and that, that sort of annoyed me as well. So in the... I don't know, hour and a half, two hours that it took well, to play. It probably have, disconnected you five times. New phone. You have got a new phone, you know, and it's mm. this new, brand new piece of equipment. So maybe it could sense that you weren't having fun. So I kept trying to turn it off. <laughs> it's dropping out, trying to save me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I will save you. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> uh, I, before, I, I didn't have a great time. Sorry. Yeah. Mate, we could jump into another one. We can have a bit of a whinge about it if you like. Sure. Uh, I've played some more Wolfenstein Young Blood this week. Okay, yeah, I still haven't I, played that. I, I want to like it. I really, really want to like it, but it's just near and unplayable. It's oh, it's still got issues. So, so poorly optimised, you know, and I'm playing it on the Pro and I'm getting screen tearing, I'm getting skipping, I'm getting drop out. Um, it's, and I'm, I'm not, I haven't logged into my Bethesda account, so I'm not, you know, playing online with anyone else or having an open party or anything. And I'm just playing single player. Just running through, and those because of because of the screen tearing. After a while, it starts to hurt your eyes. And I don't know if anyone else gets that, but I I get that feature probably because I sit so close to my screens because uh, I'm sitting in an office. But it's it just makes my eyes extremely tired to the point where after twenty half an hour of playing, it's just yeah I'm done. I've had enough. And it's got nothing to do with the story. The story's, you know, like I've, I've reviewed it. Uh, the story's quite good. It it does get going, even though the characters are a little bit annoying. I've restarted it thinking that, you know, a new update would make it a bit more enjoyable to play through. But it's, uh, I just, I can't, I can't get past those, gl- those glaring technical problems. It's really yeah. quite frustrating. Yeah, and look, I would have to say that, that it'd have to be the game not being optimised properly because the PlayStation 4, and you're on a Pro, yeah? Yeah, I'm on the Pro. The, 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 it's more than capable of running a game like that. That That's not a game that would really... It's a, it's a linear game. It's not even an open-world game. Uh, yeah, and when you when you look at it and you compare it to, um, was it First Order? Or the, the previous Wolfenstein, it is no different graphically. You know, except you've got two people on the screen instead of just going and running around by yourself. Yeah. But 
that should not like graphically they all look the same. The character models are the same. The the features are the same. The you know the um, everything looks like the previous one still. You know there might be a few little tweaks, but nothing major. New Colossus is still the previous one. Sorry, New Colossus is the oh, okay. previous one. Yep. Yeah, and it's it's just got this glaring problem with it, and it's just makes it frustrating. Yeah, well, th- you could probably see why at this this sort of stage of the console lifespan, this is why mm-hmm. I mainly switch over to PC. <laughs> yeah, because they're no longer really keeping up. So, I, I generally see so the same thing happened last generation. I got really tired of consoles being underpowered, so I switched and started playing on my PC, and that's essentially what I've done this time around too. But my console's not. That, that's the, that's the annoying thing. My console's not underpowered. It is the PS4 Pro. It's just the game itself has not been optimized. Properly well, in this in this case, yeah, the, there's a fairly good argument for the game not being optimized properly. But yes, uh, Snoogs, as much as you probably don't want to hear it, the PS4 Pro is very underpowered. Not for that, it's not. No, it's not. Well, it's it fine. is. No, it is. It, 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 they should have been able to optimize it better to run better. But mm. the the PlayStation Four Pro, where it does run well, is still running under spec compared to what, uh, 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 well, my PC can run at. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and if you want to run games at properly at six, sixty frames per second, then yeah, the, the PS Four Pro is not going to manage it. Which is why why a lot of these games are still 30, 30 frames on yeah, yeah. the on the Pro and even the X as well. Hundred percent. All right, mate, uh, let's go into a fun game, shall we? Sure. Jerk Goose. Let me know. What are we doing? Jerk Goose. I finished it this week. I, I put <laughs> some more time into it and uh, and completed it. The only thing is, though, I've finished it sort of because when you go through the game and finish it, it pops you back at the start again and gives you a whole new sort of list of things to do. So essentially mm-hmm. you go through and you go through the same areas, but it's got different things for you to try and achieve. So there's a lot of replayability, like a ton of replayability, which I've still yet to do. But I've gone through it once, and I've got to say, that is the most charming game that I've played in a long time. It is brilliant. I'm overjoyed that it's an Australian development team. I'm even happier that it's gone number one in the US, the UK, Australia, it's gone absolutely mental. People are loving it. It is a brilliant game. It's, I've tweeted at House House today saying congratulations on your game. I think it is absolutely brilliant. It's a 10 out of 10 for me. It is such, such a fantastic game. Wow. Just, you you get this feeling that you're being a jerk as the goose, but it's so cutesy. Like, you just feel like it's everybody's looking at this going, oh, you, it's that goose again. Oh, oh that goose is back. <laughs> yeah. oh. Even though you are a massive asshole. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is so good, man. Like, I, I'm very impressed with it. it. It's one of those games where I've looked at for a long time while it was being made and thought I'd really like that game. And thankfully, the reality of it isn't any any anything less. It is absolutely great. There's just the things that you can do and that you're expected to, to work out. It's just so much fun. I can't talk that game up enough, and it's reasonably priced as well. It's quite short. There's not a lot of area to it, but there's still plenty to do. If you want to do everything, I'm going to guess you probably you probably be invested close to ten hours. So it's it's pretty good for your twenty odd bucks, or however much it is. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, like your first playthrough won't take that long, but like I said, when you come through again, it gives you a whole new list of stuff to do in the new areas. So there's there's plenty mm. plenty of replay replayability. There's great. Awesome. That sounds good. I've, I still haven't got it yet because I've got a million things on, but it will be coming soon. And uh, that's perfect for me because I enjoy being a bit of a jerk in games anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's totally up up your alley, and and it's <laughs> it's it's very intuitive. Like there, are, it's one of those games where you be like, I wonder if I can do this, and then you do it, and you can, and you're like, wow, like nothing told me that I could to or to do that. I just thought maybe I should be able to do that, and you can that kind of game. I love it when a game mm-hmm. does that. You know, like in any game where you're like. 
oh, I wonder if I can shoot this and it'll react. And most of the time you shoot it and the bullet just goes straight through or it doesn't have an effect. Yeah, yeah. And you're a little bit disappointed. Yeah. But then that moment when you're in a game, you're like, I wonder if I can shoot this and you shoot it and it breaks. You're like, oh, well, that's that's kind of yeah. nice that that's in there. This is, Jerk Goose is kind of like that. We're like, I wonder if I can take this or I wonder if I can steal this or you know <laughs> affect this and sure as hell yeah you can so that, that's one of the things i really liked about it but yeah charming graphics very very great gameplay and uh very intelligently made and uh, i absolutely applaud the development team at house house from melbourne they've done a yes. sensational job and uh, i saw a quick little interview they did on channel seven and uh the 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 guy that they were talking to, he was quite modest, but you could get what he was saying. He basically said, uh, we don't really need to worry about money anymore because <laughs> oh, yeah. those bastards are millionaires thanks to that game because it's, it's sold worldwide. It's it is. Oh, it's, got, it's absolutely blown up the world over. It's fantastic yeah. to see. And I get to say good day to all next week in PAX. Well, this week. This week. Jeez, yeah. Oh, are they, are you going to meet House House? Yes. Oh, f- Give them my best, will you? Tell them I'm over the moon. I will. I uh, they're they're going to be there uh, along with oh, God knows how many. I don't I don't know how many appointments I've got to see different people, but uh, yeah, they're one of them that uh, I'd like to go and say good day to, which is pretty cool. Nice. Hmm. Uh, another one from me, mate. Call of Duty Mobile. Oh yeah, I played that as well. I'm really enjoying it. <laughs> is it because you're winning? It's probably. Because um, <laughs> I saw your post. About um, yeah, it's got to be against yeah, bots. Yeah, I I had smashed yeah. it the, my first game as well. <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah. too easy. Those course play were bots. Oh, no. Yeah, so I'm, I'm up to level six, and I am playing against real people, and I know that I'm playing against real people because there is voice chat activated. Oh, okay, and yeah, your mother's been violated several times. Several, several times. Uh, and I've still got um a couple of. Uh, MVPs, a couple of seconds, and I, I don't know. It's just it's one. It's just something that I've been able to just. I haven't played any more than one game at a sitting, uh, and I'll just literally get on, have a have a crack. Usually, like it, I had one had a big game today at lunchtime, uh, just because I was sitting there uh, having a bit of a break, and yeah, got got second in the team. We won. It was pretty cool. Uh, there was lots of swearing and carrying on, which I thought was funny. And turned it off and went and done. But it's as well played. It looks stunning on my screen. And it's just, uh, I think the little features that they've got in regards to, it's got like auto fire. So if you actually line up the sites with them, it'll fire by itself. Yeah. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier. And whether the people I'm playing with have, have put it on the advanced uh, firing and all that sort of crap, I just kept it all simple because let's be honest, it's a mobile game. And, um, yeah, it seems to be going pretty well, which is good fun. Yeah, see, the thing that I was most disappointed with is that you can't use a controller with it, which sucked. Because mm. that's yeah. why I booted it up, because like, oh, if I can use a controller now, because uh, the iPhone has that sort of connectivity with PS4 and Xbox controllers, but it, the game doesn't allow it. So uh, you, best if you want to uh, dominate, uh, use a emulator and play it on your PC. Yeah, apparently that's the best place to play it. Yeah. I've seen a few people doing that. <laughs> All right, well, new mission coming for the Division 2, the Pentagon Stronghold. Mm-hmm. So the Black Tusk, which is the the big, strong bad guys, uh, they have now taken – well, they've taken over the Pentagon and you've got to go in there and get it back pretty much. Uh, I just found some release info for it today. Title update 6, I believe, is later this week. Uh, mm-hmm. So, be able to jump into it then and have a bit more uh, knowledge of what's happening, or I should say, I'll be able to jump into it next week because I'll be away when it first comes out. Mm, yeah, I don't have PS Plus mm. anymore, so I still haven't even finished the campaign. Yeah, next time you get it, we'll have to get in another out. Yeah, maybe one day. Maybe one day. It is good fun. Uh, I do have a bit of a shunning story about the Division Two as well. What do you mean? So I'm well, I'm in a clan, right? Mm. And. When I was, you know, I'm not as addicted to this one as I was previously, and that is through no fault of the game itself. It is purely from me making sure that I don't get as addicted this time around. 
because uh, I don't want to get on here every week and go, hey, guess what I put 40 hours into this week? The Division 2, because that would just be boring. <laughs> and not only for you guys listening along, but uh, it, it, it could get that way for me as well. So I try and try and limit it to, you know, one, one or two sessions a week. And so this last one, I, I jumped online because I've been craving that online um, uh, competitiveness and mm. the social interaction. You know, you've, you've been very busy with work. Greg hasn't been well. Uh, a few other people, we just haven't been able to line up to play the same things at the same time when we've been able to get on, have a chat, have a laugh. And plus, you know, at school holidays, everyone's everyone's doing their own thing and, and having a bit of fun with it. That's cool. So I jumped on the division thought, sweet, there's a whole lot of people online from the clan. I'll jump in and see what they're doing. Yeah, I've jumped online. Usually when I jump in, I get a couple of, you know, chat invites, uh, come and do this, come and do that. None of that this time. I saw, okay, they're in the dark zone. Sweet, they're in the dark zone. I enjoy the dark zone. I'll go and jump onto, onto them. There's a few people uh, with open clan, like that. Their, uh, their team isn't full. Let's jump in. I've literally jumped into a group and yeah. there, were, there were three different groups playing uh, in the dark zone. Each had two or three people in, their, in the team out of four. And there's, you know, two or three different teams that were all in that dark zone that were all the same clan. So whether they were... I don't know what they were doing, whether they were just running around together or they just all happened to be in there at the same time, whatever. I've jumped in, gone out once. Uh, there was another team that were camping, which wasn't part of our clan. Uh, they were camping the uh, the checkpoint, walked outside. I was the last person with us out. They stepped out, got mowed down. I stepped out, didn't know what was going on, got absolutely mowed down as well, and then went back into the checkpoint and everyone just logged off. Yeah. Really? Does, does no one like me anymore? What's going on? <laughs> Were they people you know just, or randoms? No, no, no. These are people, I don't know them personally, but they're, they're online mates, you know. They're, they're people that I'm friends with on the PlayStation. I've got, yeah. I'm on the Discord. I've talked to them. I've, I've done raids with them. I've, yeah, you know, yeah, they're, yeah. They're division mates, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I've literally just sat there and I've gone, oh, fuck you too, <laughs> <laughs> and turned it off. <laughs> mm. so it was just... It was random, like it was ten o'clock at night, so it was probably what they were doing anyway. But it was still, there was just this weird coincidence that everyone sort of went, "Oh, see ya." You and weren't, you weren't in a chat that. with them. No, no, no I was. No. <laughs> it's just, it was just one of those things where it was like I logged on. I was at the base of operations. I went, "Oh, they're in the dark zone because you've got your your thing where you can go and see your clan what they're up to." And I just, I just picked one of them and jumped on one that I've I've run many many things with, and yeah, jumped in. And they just all logged off. Oh, they probably rage quit. That probably might have happened to them a couple of times before you got there, and that was the final straw. Yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, fucking that's yeah, yeah. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yeah, that was that was probably it as well. But it was just that that timing that I was sort of like, well, fine then, and, I, and then I rage quit it after one go. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I would have done the same thing. Yep, <laughs> it's all good, uh, mate. Uh, you've been. Doing some uh, Apple Arcading with Oceanhorn, is it? Yeah, yeah. Oceanhorn 2. Oceanhorn 2. Now, I played the first Oceanhorn on the PlayStation 4, and uh, it was a pretty damn good game. It was kind of like a a bit of a Zelda-esque kind of adventure game, and uh, I actually mm-hmm. gave it a, a good review back when I played that a few years ago. Now, Oceanhorn 2 is on Apple Arcade, and I've decided to sign up to Apple Arcade to give it a crack because it's free for a month. And uh, Oceanhorn 2 is on there, and they have overhauled that game crazy good. It is a very impressive game to play on a phone or a tablet, like on, a, on an iPad. It plays so well. It actually feels like a fully-fledged console game on your phone. Like, it's a... Yeah. it's Yeah, it's, it's kind of a semi-open world kind of game. And it's on your phone. It, it, it's just like, think of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Not mm-hmm. as not as amazing as Breath of the Wild, because that's like next level. But it's it's up there. It's a pretty cool game. Oceanhorn 2 is yeah, mad. I'm, just, I'm looking at screenshots at the moment. It looks, I can see where you're talking about Zelda-esque. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It is, like the, the first one was kind of like an older style Zelda game. Like it was your mm-hmm. top top-down kind of view, and this one has completely changed to a more of a third-person chase cam and is great. 
It is a really good game. I haven't played a ton of it yet, but the first sort of hour that I've put into it is really impressive. Uh, and the the mechanics that they've put into it, like, uh, you know, weapon stats, leveling up, all that sort of stuff, It's and the puzzles, it is everything an adventure game of that kind of style, Zelda-style game, that it should be on a phone, damn it. It is so good. I'm, I actually played it on my iPad because I wanted a bigger screen, and I connected my PS4 controller to it and played using that, and it's a very competent game. I'll tell you what, that game's great. I'm not sure if you can get it. I think you can get it outside of Apple Arcade, but because it's part of Apple Arcade, it didn't cost me anything. So it's just like yeah. Game Pass. So, uh, yeah, that, that that is actually a really cool game. But looking uh, beyond the game and talking about Apple Arcade, there's a lot of games on there to start off with. But so far, that's really the only one that I've played that I'm like, yeah, this is this is a good game. The rest of them mm. are just, they look great. The graphics are great. But the gameplay is not there. It doesn't have that, yeah. that, that the, the gameplay of... Of Ocean Horn too, so I'm at this point. I think I probably at the end of the month, if I haven't finished Ocean Horn, I'll probably just buy Ocean Horn. I wouldn't. I'm. I'm not overly impressed yet by Apple Arcade. It's mm. pr- pretty underwhelming, really. But I, have, I haven't tried all the games. I've downloaded a whole bunch. I'm going away for the next four days. I expect that I'll play and try a few of those, and uh, I'll come back uh, probably next week and give you a bit more of a rundown on what i think of apple arcade but so far nah not really no but ocean horn 2 2 has been it's uh made with unreal engine 4 oh yeah yeah that's what looks good that would explain a lot then and it runs on a phone crazy crazy good and i have i've just got myself i've upgraded my phone to an iphone 11 pro max that phone's Mm. amazing you know what the biggest thing is that i love about that battery lasts all day Awesome. <laughs> my, my old phone, granted it was a very old phone, I'd, I'd have to put it on charge by like 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now oh, this, this thing lasts well into the following day. Yeah, I think my phone's coming up on three years old now and it's starting to feel it. Mm. So it's like I, I, I think I want a new one. Heist by Atomizer Studios. I spoke about that last week. Yes. This is another, another Aussie mob. Uh, which I get to go and say good day to in Melbourne. It's uh, I streamed it the other night. I had a few people jump in. I actually think I actually had Atomizer Studios jump in at one stage. Uh, so I do apologise because I do suck badly at these games. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, like I said in last week's podcast, I'm the sort of person that will go in all guns blazing when it says you can pick stealth or <laughs> guns. I, I pick all guns every time. Uh, so the fact that Heist is just a stealth player's dream, it's it's it, it's really a challenge for me. It's the the fact that I have to think about how to go about it. I'm actually at a part at the moment where I know what I need to do, but I can't do it. You, you know when you get to those sort of points and it's just frustrating? Yeah. That you know how to get past this section. I know I have to distract a guard to go over there to get out of here because I'm hiding behind a door at the moment. So I've got to get the guard to go over the other side of the room so I can sneak around the door and get the hell out of there. But I can't get the guard to distract properly to get over there because every time I try to go over there to put down a distraction, like a a cherry bomb or whatever, I don't do it quick enough. But if I try to throw a coin, it doesn't make enough noise to get him to go over there. So what the hell do I need to do? So what what I think this is 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 classic trying the same thing over and over again and expecting things to change. Mm. I I know I do it. I'm guilty of it more than I'd like to admit. There are so many times in games when I get stuck, I get set going, I know that's what I need to do, so I keep doing it. And then in the end, when you find out what you actually had to do was like a ton easier. (laughs) So that's kind of what it sounds like. So you you maybe just... Very much so. Try and stretch the brain, think outside the box, try and do something different, and you might find a different solution that is a bit easier. And that's why in that particular moment... I turned it off. Yeah. On, yep. Okay. This is this is to the point now where I'm getting angry and I want to throw my keyboard. So let's turn it off. We'll take a step back. You know, a bit of a breath. Come back to it tomorrow, and and have a bit of a crack at it then. Uh, that tomorrow has not come because every day I've gotten home and just gone play anything. We'll just 
do something else. And, uh, yeah, I haven't jumped back into it yet. But uh, I will get there and I will beat it. <laughs> it has to be beaten. It has to be beaten. All right. Um, my, one more from me before we jump into a bit of a movie review from yourself. Uh, Battlefield Five. Yeah, you played yeah. that, did you? I haven't played that. Battlefield Five is so good. It is so much different to Call of Duty. It, it is... You know, it's a completely different style of play. It's a completely different player base uh, or the just the, the people that are playing it when they're playing Battlefield Five. if they play both, they're in a completely different mindset for it. So I jumped on. I haven't been on for a while. I jumped on the other night and there was a new mode called Operation Underground. Mm-hmm. Now, this is uh, pretty much, like it says, Operation Underground. It takes place within a, I think it's a German train station. And you've got a train station in the centre and you've got the entrance and the exit and you've got the three points you've either got to try and hold or take over. And you've got, you know, 64 players going at each other. So two sides, four to a team. You reach in there, you're talking. Uh, It was fantastic because people over game and chat were just talking. This is what we're going to do. This is where we're going to go. Let's try and do this. And I was just following because I haven't played it that much and very tactical. And it was just, it felt like warfare it felt like okay we need to go here to do this and because it is so like it's it's in a railway station so it's very tight very uh closed in corridors not much line of sight a lot of choke points and you're just sort of playing this tactical borderline chess game to try and take over these points as you try and move your front line forward further yeah that sounds good i mean that's that's one of the best things about playing with your friends is so you can actually communicate and people actually do mm. what what you know is suggested but yeah, if you're doing that with randoms that sounds pretty good yeah yeah it was great and the fact that yeah it was it, the fact that it was randoms it was um very very different experience and it's one of those things too like a, a round can take 45 minutes to to get through and you know you've got you've got to either take all three um points back by the by the end of the round or You've got to go through, you know, a couple of hundred um, kills, you know, so that you've got a certain amount of respawns <clears throat> before you you don't respawn anymore. Yep. And you've got to, you've got to go through them. So I play, I think, four rounds one night. So I was on there for you know three three and a half hours, and won each one of them. Ooh. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, it was just it was just good fun, and it was just it gave me that that competitiveness that I was aiming for, that I, that I really wanted. And because it was, again, it had a bit of strategy behind it, it wasn't just mindless shooting, it um, it was was quite enjoyable. I'm, I've got to play more of it. I, I really need to give it a bit more time. Uh, yeah, I, I've not played it. I still haven't got around it. See, I probably wouldn't play the, the multiplayer, but I will get it eventually when it's on sale from just so I can go through the campaign. That's what I like playing. Well, that's... I got it. Uh, I think we were all talking about getting it, you know, a couple of months back and it came up on sale for $22 or something. And I just went, yeah, I'll take it. I'll grab it. And then everyone's like, no, 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 we're not getting it yet. (sighs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I was not privy to such conversation. You were, but nothing, nothing was decided. I I very much did jump the gun. Oh, I was part of the conversation. You were part of the conversation. It was some time ago now. I, I couldn't pinpoint exactly when it was, but we were all chatting over over our chat about it. Uh, but that's all good. Uh, mate, the movie of the moment, The Joker. Joker, yeah. Well, I went and watched Joker yesterday, and mm-hmm. quite simply put, it, one of, it was one of the most brilliant superhero movies, not superhero movie, but you know what I mean, comic book yep. or whatever yep. character yep. movies that I have ever seen. That was seriously a movie for children who grew up with Batman and the story, but but has grown up now because that is not for children. I'm really perplexed as to why it's rated M15+, plus because it should be R-rated. That movie was... So it's, only, it's only M... It's not even MA. No, it's MA15. M- M15. Oh, MA15, yeah, okay. Isn't that in the, isn't it, is it M15 plus or MA15 plus? Oh. Or are they two different things? They're two different things, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's MA15 M- plus. Yeah, okay. 
But uh, yeah, look, the way I would describe Joker is that it is a psychological mind fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Because I could imagine somebody who doesn't pay attention to the movie going in and watching it and thinking this is boring, but yes. every single piece of that movie went towards showing you how the Joker and why the Joker becomes who he is, and but almost more so in a like how it would happen in real world. It's not just mm-hmm. you know something bad happened to him, so he wants to kill every kill everyone no it it touches on mental health because yep. that that's essentially the explanation for why joker is the joker is because he's a mentally disturbed person he has mental health problems and it shows you his upbringing and his treatment and essentially why he becomes joker and it's it's not it's not your typical joker story you know there's a few different uh, ways that uh, he becomes the Joker, like uh, if you've seen The Killing Joke, which is uh, it's a, like an animation movie about the Joker becoming the Joker. Mm-hmm. Slightly different story, like the way it's told, but the the Joker with Joaquin Phoenix, it is it is very oh, depressing. Th- that movie made me feel uh, depressed. It made me feel uh, like. What's the word I want? Uh, empathy. I had empathy for for Joker. If you know he's a supervillain, he's an absolute you know disgrace. That movie showed you why he became the way he is, and it was done so so well. Joaquin Phoenix sold it to me that he was a disturbed lunatic. And there, there are parts, there are parts in the movie where you're like, you know, I, I kind of feel sorry for him, but, oh. Yeah, well, it's it's actually quite um, quite funny to see the, well, not even funny because it's a disturbing topic in any case, the, the stark contrast in uh, reviews, feelings, or just a, just a flat-out opinion of people from different generations. Now, you know, people of our sort of generation who understand mental illness, understand, you know, the different stories of the Joker that grew up with Batman, you know, even though, you know, the Joker and everything started well before our time, but we did we did have that access to the darker Batman stuff growing up. Hmm. And I, I haven't seen it yet uh, just because time hasn't allowed me to to get to see it. People of, of our sort of generation are raving about it. They're saying it's one of the one of the best comic book adaptations it's you know an an utterly disturbing look into what mental health really can do and you've got the you know the the joker portrayed in a way that would be real world current you know this could happen yeah yeah and then you've got the other, the other generations and we'll talk mainly you know the younger generation those around the 20 year old age that are flat out hating it. Oh yeah, no. If you're if you're and a twenty, are, year, I wouldn't expect a twenty year old to appreciate this movie. They are they are hating it on a grand scale, like torches and pitchfork pitchfork sort of scale. You've got news outlets that are pushing that this is going to cause another mass shooting. Newsflash: It'll only cause it in the US, but well, that's something else. And they seem to be pushing that storyline just ridiculous amounts and it's gaining a lot of traction across social media and it's like you know you you get these two armies of people going towards each other when really it's a movie it tells a story it's got no political agenda behind it you know you can probably read one into it if you really want to but what's his name jack jackwin yakwin phoenix (laughs) joaquin joaquin phoenix i can never say it properly (laughs) um (laughs) At least his brother was River. I know. It's nice, nice, <laughs> a bit, bit, easier, bit easier to spell. Didn't you have another one called yeah. Leaf? <laughs> Probably. Who <laughs> knows? Uh, you know, he's done something that is, from from all accounts, like I said, from the people that, you know, I respect and, and I have shared interests with, it seems to be that it's, it's one of the best movies made of the genre. And it does follow that, you know, that killing joke sort of. Yeah. Dark, twisted Joker. 
which yeah. I, Look, I absolutely love. It, it's it needs to be seen by mature audiences, one hundred percent. And well, look, I would argue that when I was twenty years old, I wasn't mature, not even the slightest. Uh, but no. yeah, it, it is a movie that could incite uh, stupid thoughts in younger people, and because uh, it almost, almost, and. I kind of feel like I don't want to say this, but I do feel that it almost glamorizes fighting the man, you know, fighting back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because essentially what Joker does in this movie is he, that's that's the thing, you know, he's been pushed, he's going to push back. And a lot of, there are a lot of situations in life where it is good to push back when you're being wronged. And this movie kind of makes you feel for Joker which then makes you think he's doing the right thing, but he's not. He's a he's a fucking crazy villain. Well, he's not, yeah, he's a villain. He's he's not even. You couldn't even put him in the league of an anti-hero like Deadpool. No, no, not you at know, all. You, he's he's a flat out villain. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. but the the the, the movie kind of does almost glamorize his actions because it doesn't have that. There's no hero aspect. You know, spoiler mm. alert. But Batman is not in this movie, you know. Ah, write it off. <laughs> so there's no one there stopping him, essentially. So he's just got free reign sort of thing. So there's no right and wrong. Like, there's no good versus evil. It's just a movie about evil. So it kind of then makes you, like, you've got to, you've got to feel sorry for the guy. And that's where I think there's a little bit of people there going, oh, you know, it's, it's going to cause, you know, writings and and mass shootings well look it's probably the least of our worries the the movies because if somebody wants to go and do a mass shooting whether you release a movie or not like this it's going to happen it's i think it was um I i don't remember who the quote was but i don't know if it was marilyn manson's quote or if he was quoting somebody else but the media doesn't create mass murderers or so- serial killers. It just makes them more creative. And yes, I, so I, you've I kind used of, that previously, yeah. I kind of like. I understand that, and I think that's probably right. You know, people, these murderers and killers and all that are going to do their murderous things and killing things, but they may just do it in a different way if they see a movie. You know, they may put on a mask or something like that to imitate something that they saw. But we're probably going to do anyway. Yeah, you know, I, I I can't I can't believe that any sane person would go and see a movie and walk out of it with the understanding that they're going to go kill people. There's a problem there already, and anything would have pushed them over the edge. So for a wrap up a wrap up of the Joker, if you're expecting you know uh, a Marvel style movie, oh, no, no. <laughs> no, dude, do not go and see this movie. Even if uh, you're a little bit worried about um, hard hitting, depressive themes, don't go watch it. Like ser- I'm being serious because I walked out and I- I'm okay with this kind of stuff, but I was depressed watching that movie, but in a good oh, way, good. in a good way. It's giving you, that, that's one thing that I, I love about certain movies, you know, when they can, when they can actually make you feel, Something, yeah. You wouldn't normally that you wouldn't normally do, whether it be you know utter joy or you know this this depressive state where you really feel for what's going on on the screen. Then it's it's a fantastic movie. So, mm. Oh yeah, yeah. T- I'll, ten I'll out of ten. It. Well, you you yeah. need to you need to yeah. Joaquin. I'll, I'll get oh, I as I walked out of there, I likened the performance, although completely different to. Uh, Oh jeez, sorry. The the Aussie that did Joker in uh, Heath, Heath, Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger. Now I likened it, although completely different to Heath Ledger's Joker. I likened mm-hmm. the performance. Now Heath Ledger brought something special to Joker, and Joaquin has done that as well in a very different way, different uh, attitude, different position for Joker. But this Joker is up there. If if for me uh, the best Joker I've ever seen was uh, Heath, but he's on par. He's on this this Joker is on par with Heath. They are both fantastic okay. and perfect. Yeah. Yep. If Heath was a ten out of ten for me, so is Mark. <clears throat> All right. Uh, one last thing to wrap it up, mate. The uh, the meme that was floating around before it, 
Have you, have you seen that one? The meme? Yeah, the, the Joker meme. Oh, I'm not 1960s sure. Joker fell into a vat of acid to become the Joker. Yeah. You know, uh, nine, 2019, exposed to society. <laughs> yes, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's great. That is good. Yep, society right. is fucked. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, if that's it, uh, let's jump into some news, shall we? Let's do it. All right, mate. A couple of little things to have a quick chat about with the news. Uh, first one I'll get off deck. Sean Layden has left Sony. Yeah. So Sean Layden was the Worldwide Studios chairman uh, for Sony Interactive Entertainment. Now, he has been with Sony for 30-odd years. Yeah, and uh, we're, before the show, when we were just having a quick sort of chat, uh, there was some very grey area as to what's happened and especially the timing behind it. Uh, so the, the information on the 1st of October that came out was uh, a tweet from PlayStation's obviously official blogs and everything as well. Uh, it is with great emotion that we announced the Worldwide Studios Chairman Sean Layden will be departing SIE. His visionary leadership will be greatly missed. We wish him success in future endeavours and are deeply grateful for his years of service. Thanks for everything, Sean. Uh, now, as a PlayStation fan... I wholeheartedly agree. Thank you for everything, Sean. Uh, it has been great. He's been the face of PlayStation for uh, the past God knows how long. Uh, I think since 2014 he was the head of SIE uh, and it was about 2007 uh, he took over as the, the PlayStation side of things. Uh, so he's been around for, for quite some time on that side of it. But the, the reason I say there was a bit of a grey area behind him leaving, uh, that's all. That's 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 all the information that I've been able to find on it, is that one tweet from a week ago. Oh. Uh, there's been no other official statements. There's been nothing from Sean. Personally, I think this is, you know, the past 30-odd years of this man's life. He has stepped down and, you know, some, something from a, from a position that was extreme pressure, you know, extreme spotlight, and, you know, millions, literally millions of people around the world had their eyes on you. If he stepped out of the spotlight, good on him. If that's what he wants to do, you're not going to come out and, you know, jump straight back on Twitter after that sort of service. The man's in his late 50s. It's, you know, it's not, he's not going to be that, that sort of person, I don't think. So for me, I don't see anything, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of questions being asked, I suppose, around the internet. Well, look, I don't know. I just saw a little bit on it today, and uh, it was because I was looking. But mm -hmm. is it is there not much on it? Because there there really isn't much of a story to tell. Because it's well, just that's, a, that's what I'm kind of thinking. Yeah. Well, he's not exactly like he's the the face of PlayStation, but PlayStation itself doesn't really have much of a face. Like they they he doesn't do much uh, public. You know, he's not no. Major Nelson or anything like that. He's just the guy that comes and tells us some things when there's big announcements. But I don't know. Uh, look, they could, you could look into it and say that he's uh, jumping ship before the PlayStation 5 falls flat on its ass. Who knows? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so th these are all the, the con you know, conspiracy theories that are coming out. That, you know, he's, he's jumped ship. He's not happy where he's going. There's been a power struggle. There's been a coup. Uh you know, there's been all these sorts of things that I've read around the place because uh, I was more interested to see, in, you know, what he was doing, where he was going. Um, but there's been nothing on that. So there's been nothing I don't believe from Sean himself. Uh, and I dare say that's because he's taking a much-deserved break. Good on him. That's where I'm sitting anyway. Uh, but, mate, speaking of PS4... No more Facebook. No. Uh, well, the, the Facebook has uh, been removed from the PlayStation 4. And um, uh, does that bother you at all? I, no. <laughs> you know, it's actually probably a good thing because now people won't spam your feed with what trophies they've got. But uh, Yeah, I, I didn't even have one connected, I don't think. No, but it's, it's a bit of a tell of things to come, I think. Facebook is dead, I think. You know, it's still mm -hmm. obviously used worldwide by a lot of people. But for me, personally, Facebook is dead. And this comes at a funny time because I've only just recently deactivated my Facebook account. <laughs> and then um, Sony have uh, obviously seen it, seen that I've done that. And uh, yeah, the, trends, the trendsetter as I am, well, if it's, if yeah. it's not good enough for Luke One, 
well, then we're dropping it as well. So I think that's exactly what happened. But uh, yeah, Facebook is 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 dying, I think. And uh, I, th- I, th- I read somewhere that Sony were just in talks about like the licenses and whether it may come back. But at the moment, yeah. it's it's gone. I can't imagine it coming back. Um, I think uh, social media is under uh, immense pressure at the moment because it essentially has become one of the most toxic things that you could possibly do uh, and if, if it's not used correctly. And I think uh, Facebook, being the most popular one, has been smashed to smithereens. And uh, the, the, I can I can actually see a bit of a mass exodus. Now, I, I predominantly use uh, Twitter and, uh, and Discord for my social media, but mm-hmm. Facebook for me... Dead, dead, not using it. So, yeah, I think uh, nobody yeah, I, cares. I, I only use it to uh, to keep up with family. That's, yep, that's well, really a, it. and even then, it's it's not. Oh, I very rarely check it now. Yeah, one of the main reasons I got rid of it actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have when my uh, my goddaughter tagged me in her 18th birthday photos. <laughs> <laughs> Stop perming on her friends. <laughs> No, I didn't mean that. I can still remember holding her in my arms. She was so little. Oh, is that what you're talking yeah, about? I just thought you felt yeah, like a dirty old man checking out the photos oh, of her no, and her mates. Yeah, tr- trust you to go there. Yeah. Well. Pervert. Jesus. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, Marvel Avengers. Yes. Yeah, so, look, Marvel Avengers is coming uh, 15th of May next year. And I've heard people talking about it, right? So this is just, like, people that I know talking about thinking that, oh, that game's going to suck. And you know what? I don't actually think it's going to suck. I actually think it's going to be pretty damn impressive. Now, these kind of games have been, you know, known to be pretty poor in the past. But when we have a look at the type of gameplay that it is, an over-the-shoulder third-person sort of adventure-style game, and then we have a look at who's making the game, published by Square Enix and developed by Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Montreal. And then we have a look at what their resume entails, and we see the new Tomb Raider games. Why on earth would this game be nothing less than as amazing as the Tomb Raider games were? They've released Mm -hmm. some new footage with a new character that's playable, someone that I've never heard of before. I don't know if it's a new character or if it's just an old school one that hasn't been up front, but a character called Camilla Khan. And uh, there's a that trailer has come out and shows you, a, it's basically just gameplay playing as Camilla Khan. And if you don't know who Camilla uh, is, it's basically a young uh, female who can like, when, it, when she punches, her hands like grow massive and she can kick with massive feet. Kind of reminds me of uh, uh, Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic, how he can stretch and, you know, grow and all that sort of stuff. So it kind of looks like that. But it, the gameplay looks fantastic. It looks amazing. And with with who's making it, there's, there's no reason why this game shit isn't going to be good. So that's all All I wanted to bring it up is to say, I think this game's in good hands. If there was anyone that was going to make a good one, Crystal Dynamics has got to be up there. They do some good work. I'm not too worried about it. I think it's going to be good. But yeah, apparently that what there's going to be Sandra Sa- Saad, Kamala Khan, Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, and Black Widow. I think are the confirmed yeah, so playable characters. Kamala Kam- Khan is a new character. Uh, so should be she's Miss Mar well she's Miss Marvel. Uh the big thing behind her is she is the first uh Muslim female. Oh, is that was that who you yeah. were talking about before the show? I didn't I didn't know that yes. you were talking about. Okay. Yes, yes. So um yeah, it'd be good to see what she what she can do. The the gameplay I haven't watched a lot of gameplay on it. Uh I wanna see I, I'm kind of leaving it to a little bit closer uh to, to release. But um I've only seen a little bit of gameplay with Thor. And Thor is, you know, a big brawler sort of character, very strong, uh, but he looks very slow and sluggish. So that's probably the only comment I've made on it. Uh, other than that, I'm, I'm an Avengers nerd, so I will be playing this. I think it's going to be good. Check out this Camilla Khan trailer if you haven't already and have a look at the gameplay yeah. and the visuals that you see in that. I think it looks stunning. I think it's going to be good. But all that's right. all I wanted to mention. I'll give it a crack. Have some faith. All right. Beautiful. We'll get stuck into it. Mate, now that you're here, I want to have a quick chat about The Last of Us 2. Okay. To wrap it up. 
Now, the we've got a release date. Yes. We've had the state of play. We've had the trailer drop. Did you watch any of the extended gameplay footage? No. I assume no. Yeah, no. okay. I haven't either. Uh, so I won't get into that. The, the trailer, what was your thoughts? Uh, we haven't thought, spoken about this yet. I thought the trailer was was good and it mm-hmm. sort of gave me a little bit of relief because it, it obviously showed Joel and I loved that line that he says. Now, I'm going to misquote it, but it was something along the lines of, you didn't think I was going to let you do this alone, did you? I was like, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, because you know, obviously there was speculation of uh, of him not being in the game or him playing a very small part. But now that it's kind of you know out there that he's going to be playing a pretty decent role in the game, that's integral. I'm very happy. Yes. Yeah, that that was my uh, biggest takeaway from it. But yeah, it was. I think it was a good trailer. Brilliant. I, I've um, I've watched the trailer many times. Uh, I've actually had more enjoyment watching reaction trailers. Oh, yeah. So there's there's been a few around, and there's a specific YouTube channel that does. Uh, they they kind of collate all the all the re- reaction trailers together and play the trailer in the middle, and then have like twenty boxes of people's heads around it. Oh, yeah. So you can watch all these people go off at the same time, and the amount of emotional outpouring when Joel comes in, mm. you know, it's it's absolutely phenomenal to see. And you know, I I was very late to The Last of Us. I have you to thank for pushing me to to play it because I cannot rave high, higher about it. I, I absolutely love it. And, and looking forward to this one. Uh, did you get the Did you get the feeling of for, but this one being very vengeful? Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only The only thing is from that new trailer, I it was kind of like a step back because, we, like when the game was announced, I first I uh, first thought that the vengeance would come from something happening to Joel. Yes. But the trailer, I think, kind of look. It's not certain because you don't see it but i kind of get the impression that the vengeance comes from oh i can't remember her name it's ellie's love interest that we see in the the original yep. gameplay that we saw can't remember yeah, her name yeah i can't off the top of my head no uh but I, I believe it's her that might get killed you know that, that's mm-hmm. the kind of feeling i got from the trailer but like i said you don't see it and unless they build up that character at the start of the game i don't think i will feel the vengeance properly so that's one thing i hope they get right make me in the early early parts of the last of us part two make me feel something for this new character because i need to care that she's been killed if that's what happens i need to care about that and if i don't care about that then the vengeance will feel empty for me do do you think you'd get because you've got such a um what's the word i've gone black but because you've got you know such a closeness with Ellie as a character. Mm. Do you think you just feel the vengeance via her? So well, not you know, if like, I thought it was misguided. Okay, they, they need to show me why this character is so important to Ellie. That's that's what mm-hmm. I mean. You know, like if they if it shows that they've been through a lot together, then okay, uh, I'll buy that she's so vengeful and wants to fight back. But uh, look, you see, because I don't know, because I don't know what their relationship is. I know that they kiss in that little bit of a uh, trailer that we got, that first bit that we got from yep yep the, the experience or whatever it was. Uh, yep. I don't know, it was E three a couple of years ago, but. In that part where they kiss, it's like it doesn't it, that that kiss kind of felt like Ellie was like standoffish. Mm-hmm. She didn't and know what to do. Yeah, unless it was because it was a same sex kiss and she was a little bit off put doing it in public. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but it just it just didn't feel like she was a hundred percent there with that girl. So I, they need to show us that they're either like soulmates and have gone through a lot, like her and Joel have, for me to feel. Mm-hmm. That yes, this she needs to go and fuck them up because of what they did to her. Even if it is that person, it might be somebody else. I don't know. But. Yes, I that that was one train of thought that I had. Uh, another train of thought was that they did something to Ellie, uh, which because you see them them crush tackle her as she comes into a room. And they're but, just, there's there's uh, a lot of different. But the, yeah. uh, I think they might be tricking us because there's a pit because when they've pinned Ellie down, she goes no, and then they, you hear a gunshot. Yep. So I'm assuming somebody close to her was just shot and killed. Yes, so. yes. 
so uh, but then then in the next in the next scene you see Ellie the back of Ellie without a top on putting a shirt on well yeah there is that well, I think that might have been showcasing her like bruising injuries yeah the injuries yeah and she's yeah, so, yeah. sort of like battered um hmm. yeah maybe she's well, that's, been tortured that's, that's what I'm like sort of I'm that's where I've gone that you know it's happened to someone else because I don't know if you know visualizing you know something happening to Ellie I don't think that be the right that I, I don't think that's the right way to tell the story but to actually take something from her it's you know we, we've all all discussed and a lot of people a lot of, uh, in a lot of places around the world have discussed the original thought that Joel wasn't going to be there that that um that first trailer where she's playing the guitar and Joel walks in and says you really want to do this kiddo you know a, a lot of theories around that was that he was already dead yeah yeah so well, that 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 would have been hard hitting, but uh, having Joel dead, I think, would have been a, mis- a mistake. At least at the yes. start of the game. Yes. But, yeah, uh, they- either way, it looks to be absolutely brutal. There looks to be a lot of vengeance. Uh, Ellie looks to have grown into, you know, this very strong, very resourceful character. All right. She uh, she has become Joel. She is brutal yeah. as fuck, and that's that's great. I think that's great for entertainment. They're going to be great. But uh, just quickly going to go across to the chat here. I um, just noticed that uh, Azrael has joined joined us, us. and she's told me that she's lost her copy of The Last of Us. Uh, Well, she's obviously going to be banned from this Discord after tonight until that gets remedied. She, She doesn't have to. It's free on PS Plus this month. Yeah, but does she? She doesn't even. She doesn't know, know whether she doesn't know where a PlayStation is. So what, she's not a Plus uh, subscriber. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's, okay. she's, how do we? How do we ban it? Yeah, we find the ban button. <laughs> yeah, sort that out. But, uh, uh, yeah. Sweet. So that's the twenty uh, first of February, twenty twenty. That that will be coming out. Yeah, Pickles of Brian has said, what the hell is a PlayStation? Well, it's a Naughty Dog game machine. That's what it is. Yeah. You buy a PlayStation so you can play Naughty Dog games. That's it. (laughs) And it doubles as a jet engine. That's correct. That's right. Absolutely. (laughs) And my my gorgeous new microphone picks up ridiculously well. (sighs) Yeah. So uh, I've actually had people in the stream say, what the hell is that noise? Uh, Yeah, sorry, that's the PlayStation. And it's sitting, you know, ten inches away from the from the microphone. Oh, look, there it is. Oh, she knows where the PlayStation is. Oh my god, that looks so. Oh my god, don't don't turn it on. That's <laughs> it's a clean. That looks <laughs> neglected as all hell. Oh wow, I, that should I feel for that PlayStation. That should be like a crime. Yeah. Look at it. I think wow. we're going to have to send someone around to get that. Is that is that wire sitting underneath something, or is it cut? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's sitting under the dust. <laughs> All the wires are intact. There you go. Okay, it's just a, I think, <laughs> it's an illusion. It's an illusion. All right, well, if you haven't played The Last of Us and have no intention of playing The Last of Us, then uh, I think less of everybody that, that is like that. <laughs> it's just it's not an intelligent decision to make. If you're a gamer and you don't even at least give it a try, I don't think you're a very intelligent person. That's my thoughts. That's just... It's just my opinion. And if you're an Xbox only fan, it is the Gears of War of PlayStation. No, it's the Gears not. Of, it's not it's, even it's, comparable. It's the Gears of War three. Nah, not even comparable. There's nothing on the Xbox comparable. I, I didn't say it was comparable. I'm just talking about the, the the feeling of PlayStation fans behind it is similar to the feeling of the Gears fans. Mm. Have to buy a PS4 for it. Costs money. Well, buy a PS3. You can get them for cheap and buy it on the PS3. Ah, not there for thinking. That's right. Pick up a PS3 mm. for like a hundred bucks from EB Games, and then get The Last of Us on PS3 for probably fifteen bucks. There you go. I've sorted I think you out. Have a copy of it on PS3, Randy. There you go, Pickles of Brian. Sorted out. You, you, I've just sorted. given you the, the best idea. <laughs> Don't provide me with <laughs> solutions. Yeah, you might actually have to go yeah. and do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. I will Get think, it done now. I will think more of you. <laughs> Not that I could think, you know, any any more of you anyway, because you're a legend, because you're here listening to us yak on. Exactly. All right, mate, any other things you want to chat about? No, nah, I want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking the same thing. This office is turning into a sweat box. <laughs> uh, so let's get out of here. Uh, shout outs, Pickles and as thank you for joining us. Uh, all other shout outs when this goes live, it will be PAX. 
if you're at PAX on the Sunday, well, it's probably too late because I think I'm leaving there about midday. <laughs> Come on. So, sorry if you see if you see if you've seen someone walking around with snoogs on their shirt. That was probably me. Uh, at least I hope it was. There shouldn't be too many of us out there. Someone might be cosplaying you. <laughs> Somebody might be cosplaying me walking around with a Coke and a slice of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tops. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. I hope you have a fantastic time at PAX. You deserve it. It's going to be good fun for you. And I'm living it vicariously through you. So plenty of tweets, plenty of photos. I want to see them, please. There will be all that. I've, uh, I've, I've done the – I have to – Admit that I have done the silly thing and I bought a selfie stick uh, just so I can just so I can record some video above people's heads without walking around with my hands above my heads like a twat. Well, you're about twenty feet tall like yourself. Twat. You're going to be above everyone's heads anyway. No, when I go to these things, I'm the normal height and width of a gamer now. Oh yeah, fairly true. You know, yeah, we're we're all tall fatties, so yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So oh. it's uh yeah so I've I've got that I've got it set up um so I've got a whole heap of interviews that I get to do with a lot of indie guys uh, a few of the big developers I'm hoping I'm still trying to work out uh to get to chat with the lead dev for Cyberpunk 2077 which should be awesome but I'm yet to hear back on a confirmation on that so I don't know I'm really hoping I can oh, I just thought of a question you could ask yes. Tell me, are there any characters in there with three titties? Oh, God, no. As an homage um, to... Total Recall. Total Recall. Yep. <laughs> I don't know why I just thought of that, but I feel like that game <laughs> just, reminds me of Total Recall. It does, yeah. It's just one of those things that pop in your head. Uh, so, yeah, we've got Sin Spacey's panel on the Saturday, which I, I think I might actually have him a little worried at the moment. Why? Because I keep telling him I'm going to do weird shit. Oh, you do weird shit anyway. Well, yeah, well, not that weird, but, like, for instance, today I, I said, you know, because Tommy's going to be there as well, mm-hmm. and I said, you know, you better have some seats up the front for us. You know, we want a little roped-off VIP section. <laughs> and he goes, do you want me to, you know, he responded with, do you want me to supply the um, uh, the tomatoes as well? Oh. No, we're not going to. Oh, the tomatoes and eggs. I said, no, we don't need that. Maybe just some sparklers will be right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So that's that's going to be good to see the the Sega guys. I'm going to see another panel, which is uh, uh, mental health and gaming and how it can help mental health. Uh, so that should be a good one. There's some some stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff for Bethesda and Doom that I'm getting. Uh, I'm putting my sort of name forward for to do. Uh, hopefully, some cooking with Bethesda. If uh, if they come back and say yes, I'll have an ex chef come and help. And it's just pretty much three days of fun. Hopefully. Cool, man. Yeah, I hope you enjoy it, man. It should be good. Uh, so that's all from that sort of stuff. Don't forget your show, the other show, Lucas. Mm-hmm. Want to give that a little bit of a plug while we're going? Yeah, well, um, that other show is a 20-minute podcast that I do on my own sometimes with a, an extra guest. I've had no time to do one for a while now, but uh, I'm, I've got a little bit of time coming up next week. So there might be one coming soon. We'll see how that pans out. You can check it out on iTunes or YouTube on our Aussie Gamers Experience YouTube channel. Beautiful. Also, don't forget over on Twitch, Aussie Gamers TV and Snooger Visions and also Greggio XPL on, what's that other thing? Instagram. Instagram. Mind you, everything that we talk about is links in our show description, so you can just go and click on it. You don't have to type anything in. Beautiful. All right. Well, that's it, mate. Let's close it up. Let's do it. Thank you very much to everyone that has listened to the show and especially those that are still listening this far along. A super special thanks to our live listeners. Azriel jumps in at the end to get one. Thank you. <laughs> and, of course, Pickles being here the whole way through. Thanks a lot, mate. Hope you have fun. Uh, Gredge, hope you're feeling better. Lucas, thank you for joining me, mate. No worries, man. Pleasure. Sorry, the, uh, sorry, sorry the internet just did not play ball to make it a nice, easy, quick edit for you tonight. Yeah, well, hopefully I can edit it to be half decent and listenable, but uh, should be right. Should be right. It's always good. Uh, to all of our listeners, feel free to continue any of the topics we discussed on this show. I would say on our Facebook page, but we're not really over there all that much anymore. Uh, so jump into our Discord channel or hit us up on the socials. To get in touch with us directly, you can shoot us an email at info at the com. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit up our website, www.theagexp.com. Links, as always, are in the podcast show notes and descriptions. 
That's all from me. As always, I am Snooks. And I am Lucas. Have a good one. Sure you Righto, that's the end of the show. Does anybody listen to the show this far along? I don't know. But if you do, join our exclusive Discord club known as the Agents of Age. Just join our Discord channel using the link in the show description and comment the phrase, I came here to party, and you will gain Agent of Age status. Subscribe to this podcast using the links to the things in the show description notes. And if you are listening, know this, we love you. See you next time on the official podcast of the Aussie Gamers Experience.